Here's a case study of a 2007 Chevy Express van with a 6 liter engine in it, just over 53,000 miles on it. This is a church youth group going through the area, happened to stop for lunch and the check engine light was on one of their vans, so they thought they'd swing in and wait for us to diagnose the vehicle, see if it was safe for them to continue on or if they should investigate further. They basically wanted me to just diagnose and report back to them. I hook up my scan tool, retrieve three different trouble codes here, all dealing with EVAP systems. First off, I have a P0496 EVAP system flow during non-purge. Think about that again, flow during non-purge. Essentially, the purge solenoid is turned off, and for whatever reason, we're pulling a vacuum on the system yet. Also, I have a P0455 EVAP large leak, and a P0 442 EVAP small leak detected. Let's revisit again. We have a system that's pulling vacuum when it shouldn't be and also it can't maintain a vacuum once it's achieved it. We may have two problems here or we may have one big problem causing them all. I pull up some of the data pids here and see in the red my vent solenoid commanded. Also in the green is my purge solenoid commanded and in the blue we have the FTP sensor in inches of water. Very important to note here for the technicians as well with the blue, as vacuum is increasing, blue will go down. Less pressure is at the bottom of the screen, which we're trying to achieve, and more pressure is at the top of the screen. So as you can see here in the capture, I start out by closing the vent, which would be not venting. And as the green line indicates, I'm ramping the purge all the way up to 100%. And as the blue indicates, we're beginning to pull a little bit of vacuum, but not very much. After a couple seconds of 100% purge, I actually turned the purge solenoid all the way off to zero. You see, we finally built a little bit of vacuum in the tank, but even after I shut the purge solenoid off, we're still pulling a little bit further vacuum. A couple minutes go by, and watching, and still with having the purge solenoid shut off and the vent solenoid closed, we're still actually increasing vacuum on this thing. Right there, I'm starting to believe with that first code that we had set for the EVAP flow during non-purge. Next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the purge solenoid and see if for whatever reason it's stuck open. Once again, vacuum is increasing with the purge commanded off, so vacuum should not be doing anything at this point. I pop the hood, and of course it's the middle of summer, this thing's about 200 degrees under the hood, but fortunately right behind the throttle body is the purge solenoid right up on the top of the plastic intake manifold. First thing I do is electrically disconnect the purge solenoid, so I want to make sure that PCM's not trying to command it on or do anything funny like that. I also unplug the vacuum line off the purge solenoid, so the purge solenoid is still connected physically to the intake manifold. However, I've disconnected it electronically and pulled the other vacuum line off it. Now I plug in my vacuum gauge. As you can see here, without the PCM commanding it on, we have 18 inches of vacuum being drawn through that purge solenoid. At this point, I know that it's stuck open, setting that first code of uh, excessive flow during non-purge. Fortunately, the, the group is going to hang out for a little while. I get a purge solenoid coming. I get it, reinstall it, and run that same test. Go back to the scan tool. As you see here again in the red, I close the vent the green, I start ramping up purge. Almost instantly, we start pulling a vacuum on, on the system get it to approximately six and a half, seven inches of water. I shut the purge solenoid off and hold it and we're maintaining them here. Several minutes later we're still maintaining vacuum on the systems. At this point I'm confident there's no leaks in the system. The purge solenoid is working properly. Send them on their way, tell them they have a great trip. Approximately a week later the same group is returning back home from their mission trip and they're so happy for the service we did for them and for getting them in on a hot busy day. Just thank us again. I go back out to the vehicle, plug in the scan tool and just look at specific DTCs just to make sure that there's not a EVAP leak lurking somewhere. I pull up the specific DTC and you can see here that since I cleared the codes a week earlier or the test has since passed, I'm fairly confident that the system is totally repaired basically send them on their way again, wish them the best for their return trip.